Morgan Freeman may be known for his narration in films like Shawshank Redemption and March of the Penguins, but there's one movie the Oscar winner refused to lend his silky smooth pipes to. Keep watching to learn which one and a whole lot more. After a handful of tiny roles in films and TV shows in the early 70s and a stint on The Electric Company, Morgan Freeman didn't really break out as an actor until the late 1980s, with a couple of Oscar-nominated performances in Street Smart and Driving Miss Daisy. Freeman was well into his 50s by the time he achieved household name status, but that doesn't mean he didn't have a lifelong love of acting. Raised by his grandparents in Mississippi, Freeman landed roles in many school plays and even won a statewide acting competition at the age of 14. He pursued theater with such skill and intensity that by the time he was ready to graduate high school, he landed a drama scholarship to Jackson State University. Astoundingly, Freeman passed on the quick entry to the next level of acting. Ironically, Freeman's love for movies almost sent him on an entirely different career path. Freeman's enthusiasm for cinematic depictions of mid-air military combat inspired him to enlist in the U.S. Air Force in 1955. I wanted to be in the military. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. I wanted to fly airplanes. After four years, he left the service upon realizing life as a fighter pilot wasn't going to be as cool and exciting as Hollywood had led him to expect. It may be tough to imagine, but the same guy who partnered up with Clint Eastwood to assassinate two cowboys in Unforgiven was serenading children with songs a couple of decades earlier to help teach them lessons about reading and nutrition. Between 1971 and 1977, Freeman appeared daily on The Electric Company. The show was something of a companion program to Sesame Street, and it was meant for children too old for the more well-known program. Of the characters Freeman played, the most well-remembered is Easy Reader, a hipster who would get intensely excited at the prospect of reading anything, from a storefront sign to the ingredients on a soda bottle. He also played Mel Mounds the DJ and Vincent the Vegetable Vampire. Speaking to Rich Eisen in 2017, Freeman said he was initially terrified to get involved with the electric company because he worried that getting too heavily identified with children's television would exclude other opportunities. Freeman told Eisen, If that show had kept going, I might still be there. <laughs> If you ask people the movie they most associate Morgan Freeman with, you're likely to hear about Seven or The Shawshank Redemption. But ironically, the part Freeman regularly calls his breakthrough role is perhaps the one he's least remembered for, at least outside critic circles. It took over 20 years, but the actor finally earned fame and his first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor with 1987's crime drama, Street Smart. In Street Smart, Freeman plays the pimp, Fast Black, who's locked in a battle of wits with Jonathan Fisher, played by Christopher Reeve, a magazine reporter who'd been writing fictional stories about prostitution and selling them off as the real thing to save his flagging career. At the time of the film's release, The New Yorker's Pauline Kael was ahead of the curve, starting her review of Street Smart with the question, is Morgan Freeman America's greatest living actor? While it took Freeman until the age of 50 to make it, he doesn't seem to feel at all bitter about the journey, pointing out in a 2011 interview, it didn't have to happen at all. While doing press for Dolphin Tale 2, Freeman called his role in Street Smart his favorite of all his parts. Fast Black was about as far away from me as I can get in terms of acting. It was more alien to who I really am. In a 1996 talk with Interview Magazine, Morgan Freeman said it was in part his work on 1992's Unforgiven that drove him to make his directorial debut with the critically hailed Bopa the following year. Set in South Africa during the time of the apartheid, Bopa stars Danny Glover as Micah, a tough but fair policeman who's hoping his son will follow in his footsteps. While Micah believes his place on the police force is to the benefit of black South Africans, as the film progresses, he sees the way his white colleagues work, and he begins to question his beliefs. While critics liked Bopa, the box office was less impressed, which may have something to do with why Freeman's only directing work since has been a few episodes of the political drama Madam Secretary. It could also be because Freeman's experience on Bopa was marred by interfering studio executives. Freeman told Interview that the only thing about directing Bopa that wasn't rewarding was dealing with studio executives who were making decisions thousands of miles away. One of the most iconic aspects of Morgan Freeman's career has less to do with anything you've seen him in and more to do with what you've heard him in. 
As Graham Norton put it when Freeman appeared on his talk show, it was Freeman's memorable narration of 1994's The Shawshank Redemption that made him Mr. Narration. I hope people stop asking me to do stupid voiceovers like this. After The Shawshank Redemption, Freeman's voice was in high demand, and 2005 proved a particularly busy year for Freeman in the sound booth. That year, he narrated the PBS docuseries Slavery and the Making of America, the documentary film March of the Penguins, and Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. His voice has also been used on the Waze navigation app, and it replaced Walter Cronkite's voice in the introduction for CBS Evening News in 2010. This is the CBS Evening News with Katie Curry. When Jimmy Kimmel asked Freeman about the secret to his voice in 2016, the actor said he didn't have any kind of special technique, simply citing his voice and diction lessons in college. But he was a little bit more open six years earlier while doing press for Dolphin Tale. Freeman said that if you want your voice to sound more impressive, you've got to yawn a lot. Pressed a bit further, Freeman explained. It relaxes your vocal cords, and once they're relaxed, the tone drops. The lower your voice is, the better you sound. In 2009, Morgan Freeman starred in Invictus as Nelson Mandela, the anti-apartheid revolutionary who was released from prison after nearly three decades in 1990 and became the president of South Africa four years later. Invictus was a critical success, and Freeman earned an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, while co-star Matt Damon was nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Making Invictus was a journey Freeman started almost 15 years earlier. During a press conference for his 1995 autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, Nelson Mandela said Morgan Freeman was his choice for lead actor for any potential adaptations. In 2009, Freeman told The Griot that was the moment he warmly accepted that he would eventually play Mandela. Freeman met with Mandela not long after and asked to have access to the South African president in order to give the role as authentic a portrayal as possible and Mandela agreed. But getting a script wasn't easy. Freeman said he and his production partner, Laurie McCreary, tried to adapt Long Walk to Freedom, but that it was difficult to present the entire scope of Mandela's story into a two-hour movie. The breakthrough came with John Carlin's 2006 book proposal for what would become Playing the Enemy, Nelson Mandela and the Game That Made a Nation. According to Freeman, the story about the South African rugby team at the 1995 Rugby World Cup perfectly captured Mandela. Freeman told the Grio, For us, this was the film to give the world insight into who Mandela is and how he operates. In 1994, Morgan Freeman starred in The Shawshank Redemption as Red, the best friend of the wrongly imprisoned Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins and one of Shawshank Penitentiary's most well-known smugglers. In spite of the film bombing commercially, it's gone on to become a regular feature on any list of the most inspirational films or movies that'll make you cry. Amazingly, Freeman almost turned the role down. The film is based on Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption from Stephen King's 1982 collection, Different Seasons. In 2014, Freeman told Yahoo Entertainment that he was sent the book after being offered the role, explaining, And I read the first page, and Red was this Irishman, so I closed the book. I never read another line. I was like, I can't play an Irishman. Thankfully, Freeman ultimately didn't let that stop him, and we got to see him in one of his best roles. A bit of a wink was put in the script acknowledging the ethnicity change. When Dufresne asks Freeman's character why everyone calls him Red, he answers, Maybe it's because I'm Irish. Morgan Freeman and Clint Eastwood famously starred as aging gunslingers going on one last job in the practically flawless film, Unforgiven. Eastwood directed this 1992 western, and ever since, the pair have expressed nothing but confidence and kinship toward one another. I think the best of the martyrs, certainly for me, is Clint Eastwood. In 2004, Freeman starred in another Eastwood-directed feature, the heartbreaking sports drama Million Dollar Baby, and got his first Oscar win for his efforts. And when it came time for Freeman to realize his goal of playing Nelson Mandela in a movie with 2009's Invictus, his choice for director was clear. He told the Seattle Times that when producer Laurie McCleary asked him what director he wanted, Freeman answered, I can only think of two, Clint Eastwood, and then there's Clint Eastwood. He's the best director I know. 
Freeman praised Eastwood's directing style in a number of interviews, usually pointing to his hands-off style in dealing with actors. He told the Seattle Times, Eastwood can stand back and let them do their thing, then take all the credit. Known for his distinctive, soothing, authoritative voice, Morgan Freeman has landed a lot of voiceover and narration work. Serving as the de facto, all-knowing, metaphorical voice of God in the Shawshank Redemption and March of the Penguins led to Freeman's playing the personification of the Christian idea of God in the blockbuster comedies Bruce Almighty and Evan Almighty. One film in which Freeman didn't play God was Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg's star-studded apocalyptic comedy This Is The End. Rogen and Goldberg wrote a part just for Freeman, but he turned it down. Rogen told Yahoo Entertainment, we wanted him to play God. Apparently, he takes his character as God very seriously. The 2000 historical golf drama The Legend of Bagger Vance is another big movie that was designed to include Freeman at one point. Initially, director Robert Redford planned to star in the film himself alongside Freeman. Then he changed his mind and decided to cast the younger actors Matt Damon and Will Smith instead. During the Me Too movement that rocked Hollywood in 2017 and 2018, in which inappropriate and criminal behaviors of powerful men were rooted out and made public, two women accused Morgan Freeman of unprofessional behavior of a physical nature. According to CNN, a production assistant who worked on Freeman's movie, Going In Style, in 2015, alleged that the actor touched and rubbed her and commented on her body and attire almost daily, and repeatedly tried to lift her skirt. The latter behavior stopped only when co-star Alan Arkin told Freeman to quit it. CNN also reported that a member of the production staff of the 2012 film, Now You See Me, alleged sexual harassment of herself and a female assistant. According to ABC7 New York, Freeman responded to the allegations with a 10-page letter issued by his lawyer demanding a retraction and apology from CNN. The letter stated, in part, CNN's report is a product of malicious intent, falsehoods, sleight of hand, and absence of editorial control and journalistic malpractice. Later on, Freeman apologized to, quote, anyone who felt uncomfortable or disrespected. A year and a half after Freeman feuded with CNN, the cable network hired him to narrate a video for parent company Warner Media's investor presentation, a move that one CNN staffer called disgusting. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual abuse, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE. <laughs>